Gary, thank you so much for being here. We were talking about it's been five or six years, and it's nice to know you haven't just been sitting on your laurels all this time. <laughs> and that you are still here sharing <laughs> some great information with people. Well, thank you. Uh, when you were here before, we focused on two or three different areas of your life and you shared with us from the business standpoint and what was called, I thought it was cute, it was called Garyisms. And, yep. and, uh, but this book is on the power of get statements. And I had to read it again. I thought, now, did you use that word out of order? You know, I had to, mm -hmm. I, and it's interesting because um, I don't think we realize how we talk sometimes and what those words are what we're wanting to say, but how they come out. You know, it really is true. And the way I, the, the word get came up was, you know, many times we say we must do something or we have to do something. And I don't know if you're like me, but if you tell me I have to do something, normally Whoa. I'm going to do the opposite. <laughs> and uh, not necessarily proud of that, but it's mm -hmm. something I just know about myself. But the word get, I was thinking about a word that could actually embrace that drawing towards something that was positive. Mm -hmm. And the word get came to my mind. And then I'm not satisfied just with the word. You have to have an acronym. Uh -huh. And that acronym for the word get is Great Expectations Today. Great Expectations Today. And I, I read, as I was reading through the book, your book, I thought it was so interesting. It said, get statement is a future result stated in the present tense. Present tense with a date of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But it's going into your future and making it so real that you can see it, taste it, and feel it. And bringing that vision back to your present day so that you're now being pulled towards that reality and you're not just having to go towards it. It's not something you get up in the morning and go, oh golly, I've got to do this to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You get up in the morning and you are actually programming yourself and reminding yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And so it makes that, that trip worthwhile, even though at times we're having to do things that we may not like. Mm -hmm. Or maybe hard for us because yes. we're not used to it. Correct. Is this a bit of what, what some um, people call positive affirmations? It, it, it is similar. similar. Affirmations, I think, are good. I don't think they go far enough because an affirmation is just stating a positive statement like I am wealthy or I am rich and you look at your bank account and go no mm -hmm. I'm not <laughs> and so a get statement is an actuality it's a result in the future that allows us to embrace a new reality before it actually shows up in our physical sense in our physical world and so Years ago, I wanted to receive a particular watch. And as I was embracing a get statement, what happened was I was actually seeing myself go into a particular jeweler and be able to have that watch. Now, I did get the watch. It's right here. But it wasn't even from that same jeweler. But that experience every day of having that real-life experience, I call it creating your personal deja vu. Mm -hmm. And having that experience, in fact, I had that experience one day when I was, um, I love flying, you know, I, I like airplanes. And uh, one day Beach had it, called me and said, would you come up to the airport? We know you're busy. We'd like to preview an aircraft to you. And I went, oh, golly, wow, great. how exciting. And I called my best friend and said, you're now my VP of marketing. I told Sharon, <laughs> you know, you get dolled up. We're, we're, we're going to go see this airplane. And we go up, and I said, how long are we going to, you know, have to look at the, the, the plane? And they go, well, it's up to you. It's in the air. And I'm going, oh, golly, this is great. And I get into the, the plane, and they go, would you like to fly right seat, which is the co-pilot. Uh -huh. And the thing that happened, though, is as we were coming onto the runway, I had visualized this so long that it was like that, that visualization and the present day came together. Uh -huh. And that really joined, I had prepared myself. Uh -huh. And it, it just, it makes it a lot more fun than just saying, I'm going to accomplish X, or I'm going to make so much money, or whatever that goal may be. So just you. setting a goal without any action following it does no good. Well, it can, but it doesn't have the energy. So it would be like, you're going to get there, but you're going to also have maybe that feeling of running in molasses, so that you're not... Really Sluggish. getting that, yeah, you're not getting the full benefit of that energy that you're expending. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's why a lot of us 
um, maybe resist putting it down, yes. say, writing down what, um, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds, I want to lose this, I want to get $100,000. I thought that was an interesting story in here about mm -hmm. the $100,000. Tell us about that. You know, the 100000 for a monetary, for people as far as receiving, whether you're a W-2 employer or a self-employed business owner, is really the same. And what happens is that $100,000 seems to be that glass ceiling. Once you hit that, then you're just duplicating. Mm -hmm. But mentally, we have built a ceiling for ourselves. And, you know, when we do that, we, we put that resistance in. But I think that there's another component, and that is we have taught ourselves not to dream. And mm -hmm. that we used to, at the beginning of every year, had, we had a little ritual. What was it? Uh, New Year's uh, resolution. That's it. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve resolution. I just quit those. You know, and <laughs> when I ask audiences, and it doesn't really matter how big it is, usually... I usually I only have one or two that still do it, and I ask people, why don't you do that anymore? Mm -hmm. And they go, why would I want to feel bad when on January <laughs> 3, I'm already so far behind that I uh -huh. know that I can't catch yes. up? Mm -hmm. And so we have taught ourselves not to dream, not to set goals, because we don't want to be disappointed. Oh, uh -huh. And we don't want to feel uh -huh. bad, because we, particularly in North America, we have this game that we do called comparison. Mm -hmm. I'm going to compare myself to you and whether or not I'm up to speed or you ahead of me. And, you know, when we don't set the goal, now we can have that a little more invisibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that makes that certainly makes sense. So you're saying it really does help us. We can reboot, if we use that word, reboot our brain by setting these get statements. Correct. You know, and the, the way the reboot the brain came about is that in each of our brains in the back, there's a group of cells called the reticular cells. And it's very small and it only has one purpose. It's a filter. And so we have, and there's numbers in studies that use different numbers, but the most common is we have about a billion bits of information per second wow. coming into our subconscious. So how do we know what to focus on? How to, because if we had all that information, we wouldn't be able to focus. Mm -hmm. And so the reticular, absolutely. And so the reticular cells synthesizes down the number two and the numbers also, some are even lower than this, to about 2,000 bits of information. And so the example I use many times is, have you ever purchased a car, driven it off the lot, and all of a sudden, you see that same car, that same color, everything is right there. <laughs> yeah. And people say, oh, it's happened to me all the time. And my question then is, were those cars already there? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, we just didn't see, see them. Uh -huh. And so programming the reticular cells about what to pay attention to is what's important. And that's the rebooting of the brain. Well, it's really interesting. I hope people will take, take time, go to, go to your website and, and uh, read portions of the book. Uh, and it's what I liked was that it's not even as long a book as one might think because it's a workbook. There's places to write our own get statements, our, our vision statements. So it, it's really a, an exercise book. It, it is. You know, they say knowledge is power and I don't mm -hmm. agree with that. It's the application, application. of the knowledge that makes it powerful. Well, thank you so much, Gary. You're I appreciate welcome. getting to see you again. Absolutely. Gary, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. I just finished reading your latest book. You have several, but this one, this is the uh, the one on the power of get statements. And I have to admit, one page just led me to the other. And what I really liked about it, after I found out what you were talking about, was having the the place in here. It's a workbook mm -hmm. where you can write. I mean, you can get a tablet if you want to, but I liked having it right here. So thank you for doing the book and well, for making it available to us. But let's maybe let's just explain, first of all, what is a get statement? A get statement, again, is a future result stated in the present tense with a date of accomplishment. Stated in the present tense with a date of accomplishment, not a deadline. Not it's a, a deadline. Da <laughs> I like the positiveness of all of That's this. That's right. What happens when we write down our get statements? What we're doing is really re we are reprogramming and giving information to the reticular cells that's in the back of each of our brains of what to pay attention to because there is so much white noise out there in the world today. In fact, all of the information that was ever published from the Gutenberg Press up to 1987 is being produced 
every single day. That much information. Uh -huh. And so we have this inundation uh -huh. of information. So what do we, how does our uh, subconscious know what is important for us, what's giving us the result that we want, what to pay attention to? And so rebooting so that. So weeding it out. Correct. Filtering it out. Mm -hmm. And so it really is one of those processes of saying, this is where I want to spend my energy, my time, and my money because there is a limitation. And the most important element there is our time. Uh -huh. Time is one of those elements that we each have the same amount of mm -hmm. that when we invest it, we get a return. When we spend it, it's gone. It's gone. Uh -huh. And so the thing is, is that it's the only asset that we have that is not duplicatable. We can't create time. Mm -hmm. And so what is it that we're going to do that's going to give us Make that the result? the best use of that's that. That's true. Um, and I thought this was, and this is in the book as well, but if you'll elaborate on why this is such a good get statement kind of <laughs> tongue twister. Well, you know, a get statement, I wanted to give everyone an example of what a get statement looked like, and uh -huh. we're, we're going to dissect this as well. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we all have in common is a monetary, you know, desire on an sure. annual basis. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we used the $100,000 ceiling. Uh -huh. And so that $100,000, again, is a, a number that we have a tendency to resist. We get up to it and then we pull back. Uh -huh. We get up to it, but once we break through it, there seems to be an energy beyond it. And so what I did was I created a guest statement, just as an example, if the numbers don't work for someone mm -hmm. that is watching, mm -hmm. just put your numbers in, but let's go through it. Okay, it's, that's what's I receive $100,000 with $80,000 net revenue mm -hmm. by December 15th, 2018, or whatever the year is. Mm -hmm. And as we back up, there's some really critical parts to this. Uh -huh. I first read it and I thought, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so the first part is I receive. Uh -huh. I receive. It doesn't say I work hard. It doesn't say I get lucky. It doesn't say this revenue is going to come from this particular source. Mm -hmm. What it does, it allows us to receive from any place from maybe some place you receive an inheritance. Maybe mm -hmm. you have a, a job opportunity, a business opportunity that comes up. All of a sudden, it is created. So it's not about working hard. See, one of the beliefs that we've had is that if I work harder, I will make more money. Mm -hmm. If that was true, every coal miner, every oh, yeah. steel worker, every farmer in America would be a gazillionaire. Mm -hmm. It's not about working hard. It's about working focusedly. And if, if, Is that a word? I, it must be. I just used be. it. You know what I said. <laughs> um, so it's about receiving. Then it's the two numbers. The reason there are two numbers is over the years, as I worked with my clients, is that many times I see one number. And which number do you think they do more of, the bigger number or the smaller number? The bigger. The bigger, mm -hmm. because it's more exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I want that much. But do they get to spend that bigger number? I always forget about that yeah. part. Yeah, <laughs> so this is the gross number and the net number. Uh -huh. And again, no matter if you're a W-2 employee or a self-employed individual, you have two numbers. You have a gross and a net. So the cost of doing business, taxes, all of the things that go into creating that, that smaller number is actually the number that we get to apply to our lifestyle. Okay. And so... It's the net. The net. And it's revenue. So it doesn't necessarily have to be wages. Again, it could come from any source. Mm -hmm. And then here's a really interesting word. It's instead of the word on, in which most goals are said mm -hmm. on this date, mm -hmm. it's the word buy. Buy. So but isn't that buy, the same thing? But if I say buy, what can happen? If I say on, it's this particular it point in time. right there. I could maybe get it earlier. Hey, there you go. <laughs> That's exactly it. it can, and I would say at least 80% of the time when people engage in this process, it happens earlier. Oh. And so when we do give ourselves permission, we don't have to wait. And we can go ahead and chunk it down a little bit as well. So if we have a dollar amount, say it's $100,000, mm -hmm. but that person has never received more than, say, $40,000 a year. If they go to 100000 it could be like a rubber band example. If mm -hmm. the rubber band is not stretched, it's not utilizing itself for what it was designed for. If it's stretched too far, it 
breaks. breaks. Mm -hmm. The same thing when we create that vision for ourselves. If we go to that $100,000, we could be so far behind so quickly that we really truly just give up. Mm -hmm. And so we could do that chunking and go, okay, 40, now we go to 60. Now, because we said buy, I don't have to wait to the end of the year to re-engage a new get statement. Well, that's true. Hit that and then go on again. And the fa my favorite part of this is this um, buy the date. The date. I started to say deadline, but I learned about that. <laughs> that's a challenge to anyone watching. Read that in the book. That's that's really clever. But this is to to receive this amount of money or whatever it is uh -huh. by December fifteenth. Why I would probably say just by December thirty first, by and, the end of the year. Well, because we want to give ourselves that much uh -huh. extra time. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I found was and this was my problem as well, because I was doing the same thing to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. My family wasn't real happy with me because I was working through the end of the year because I was so focused on You the probably hadn't desire. started soon enough. <laughs> yeah. And so I started thinking, why not change that? We're in total control of the timing. So let's set it for December 15th. And the next two weeks, we can enjoy the holidays. We can take it to rejuvenate ourselves, rejuvenate ourselves to get ready for the new year. We can use it for whatever we want Celebrate. instead of just pushing all the way through. Uh -huh. You know, it's interesting over the years that there was a time when I spent nine years without a vacation because I'd get to the end of the year and go, oh, I didn't get that in. I'll do it next year. Uh -huh. Nine straight years. Wow. And then I got so afraid that if I took a vacation, I'd never want to come back. <laughs> and so, yeah. but by doing it for December 15th, we give ourselves permission mm -hmm. to enjoy the rewards of what we did for that that fiscal or that for that calendar year. Well, let's go over once more just so that uh, people can understand how to write their get statements. Absolutely. So what I'm going to suggest is everyone take 8 to 10 of those goals that you have mm -hmm. and pick it out that this is what you're going to accomplish in the next 8 to, or uh, 12 to 18 months. Okay. And then write them down by hand. And this is key. Because this is the, the most critical part about re, re, actually rebooting the reticular cells. Because when we write out, and we, that's embracing the kinesthetic. Because there's three ways that we learn. Kinesthetic, auditory, and visual. Mm -hmm. So when we're writing it, and it can mm -hmm. be printed. It doesn't have to be cursive. Mm -hmm. People don't do that anymore. But, <laughs> but by hand, uh -huh. it's the kinesthetic. When we see it on the piece of paper, it's activating the visual. Mm -hmm. And then it's when we see it, it's reinforcing. And then when we see it, we actually speak to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually doing all three things at the very same time. So how long do we keep doing this? Forever. Oh, for, forever. Forever. Okay. But my challenge is do it for the next 30 days. 30 days. So it'd be like, you know, someone saying, I want to go and have a physically fit body. And you go to the gym. You achieve your goal. Do you stop going to the gym? <laughs> Well, I probably would, but we shouldn't. <laughs> yes. So the reality is that as you have this as a part of your life, it takes no more than about five minutes a day. Uh -huh. I like doing it in the morning because it sets myself up for recognizing opportunities throughout the day. But you can do it in the morning or the evening. Uh -huh. And what you're going to find is after seven, eight days, you're going to know what each of those elements are, and it's going to be verbatim because you're going to write them out the same way every single time. And so what happens that... Uh, you have this memory, and after 30 days, and the 30 days is just, it's not because we learn after 21 days mm -hmm. or any of that. It just is a, a cycle. We can conceive mm -hmm. of 30 days, okay, I'll commit to that. I've had people in 30 days actually receive the result within that period of time. Wow. And it gives them that extra belief uh -huh. it that oh, it actually works. But if you stop, if you miss a day or two, no worries. Just start back up again. Uh -huh. And when you get to that plateau, it works. If it works, why did, would you stop? That certainly makes sense. Pretty soon you just have these, you're, you're emphasizing and re-emphasizing your brain to, to help you get to your goal. Absolutely. And because it's so new for people, one of the things that I always offer, and this is just something that there is no cost to it at all, is that if individuals, when they write out their guest statements, if they want to email them to me, I will review them and send them back. Because oh, what I have uh -huh. found many times is that they write out a get statement that's actually an action step. It's a process to get to the get statement. Mm -hmm. But if they're focusing, say, the, the $100,000, and they say, I get 10 new clients. Well, the get statement is not 
10 new clients, it's the $100,000. Uh -huh. And so they do they're, it by. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's just a, a tightening that up so that they have that predictable result that they're wanting as a result for that investment of time, money, and energy. Well, that's, all, that's nice of you to do and to offer to do that. So, well, thank you very much. I, I've learned a lot today. Well, thank you. It's always been a pleasure. Thank you. Gary, thank you so much for being here. We were talking about it's been five or six years, and it's nice to know you haven't just been sitting on your laurels all this time. <laughs> and that uh, you are still here <laughs> sharing some great information with people. Well, thank you. Uh, when you were here before, we focused on two or three different areas of your life and you shared with us from the business standpoint and what was called, I thought it was cute, it was called Garyisms. And, yep. and, uh, but this book is on the power of get statements. And I had to read it again. I thought, now, did you use that word out of order? You know, I had to, mm -hmm. I, and it's interesting because um, I don't think we realize how we talk sometimes and what those words are what we're wanting to say, but how they come out. You know, it really is true. And the way I, the, the word get came up was, you know, many times we say we must do something or we have to do something. And I don't know if you're like me, but if you tell me I have to do something, normally Whoa. I'm going to do the opposite. <laughs> and uh, not necessarily proud of that, but it's mm -hmm. something I just know about myself. But the word get, I was thinking about a word that could actually embrace that drawing towards something that was positive. Mm -hmm. And the word get came to my mind. And then I'm not satisfied just with the word. You have to have an acronym. Uh -huh. And that acronym for the word get is Great Expectations Today. Great Expectations Today. And I, I read, as I was reading through the book, your book, I thought it was so interesting. It said, get statement is a future result stated in the present tense. Present tense with a date of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But it's going into your future and making it so real that you can see it, taste it, and feel it. And bringing that vision back to your present day so that you're now being pulled towards that reality and you're not just having to go towards it. It's not something you get up in the morning and go, oh golly, I've got to do this to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You get up in the morning and you are actually programming yourself and reminding yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And so it makes that, that trip worthwhile, even though at times we're having to do things that we may not like. Mm -hmm. Or maybe hard for us because yes. we're not used to it. Correct. Is this a bit of what, what some um, people call positive affirmations? It, it, it is similar. similar. Affirmations, I think, are good. I don't think they go far enough oh. because an affirmation is just stating a positive statement like I am wealthy or I am rich and you look at your bank account and go no mm, I'm no. not <laughs> and so a get statement is an actuality it's a result in the future that allows us to embrace a new reality before it actually shows up in our physical sense in our physical world and so Years ago, I wanted to receive a particular watch. And as I was embracing a get statement, what happened was I was actually seeing myself go into a particular jeweler <laughs> and be able to have that watch. Now, I did get the watch. It's right here. <laughs> but it wasn't even from that same jeweler. But that experience every day of having that real-life experience, I call it creating your personal deja vu. Mm -hmm. And having that experience, in fact, I had that experience one day when I was, um, I love flying. You know, I, I like airplanes. And uh, one day, Beach had it, called me and said, would you come up to the airport? We know you're busy. We'd like to preview an aircraft to you. And I went, oh, golly, wow, great. How exciting. And I called my best friend and said, you're now my VP of marketing. I told Sharon, <laughs> you know, you get dolled up. We're, we're, we're going to go see this airplane. And we go up, and I said, how long are we going to, you know, have to look at the, the, the plane? And they go, well, it's up to you. It's in the air. And I'm going, oh, golly, this is great. And I get into the, the plane, and they go, would you like to fly right seat, which is the co-pilot. Uh -huh. And the thing that happened, though, is as we were coming onto the runway, I had visualized this so long that it was like that, that visualization and the present day came together. Uh -huh. And that really you had joined. Yourself. I had prepared myself, uh -huh. and it, it just it makes it a lot more fun than just saying I'm going to accomplish X or I'm going to make so much money or whatever that goal 
may be So just you. setting a goal without any action following it does no good. Well, it can, but it doesn't have the energy. So it would be like you're going to get there, but you're going to also have maybe that feeling of running in molasses so that you're not really Sluggish. getting that. Yeah, <laughs> you're not getting the full benefit of that energy that you're expending. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's why a lot of us um, maybe resist putting it down, yeah. say, writing down what, uh, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds, I want to lose this, I want to get hundred thousand dollars I thought that was an interesting story in here about mm -hmm. the hundred thousand tell us about that you know the hundred thousand for a monetary for people as far as receiving whether you're a w-2 employer or a self-employed business owner is really the same and what happens is that hundred hundred thousand dollars seems to be that glass ceiling once you hit that then you're just duplicating mm -hmm. but mentally we have built a ceiling for ourselves and, you know, when we do that, we, we put that resistance in. But I think that there's another component, and that is we have taught ourselves not to dream. And mm -hmm. that we used to, at the beginning of every year, had, we had a little ritual. What was it? Uh, New Year's uh, resolutions. That's it. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve resolutions. I just quit those. <laughs> you know, and w when I ask audiences, and it doesn't really matter how big it is, usually I, I, usually I only have one or two that still do it, and I ask people, why don't you do that anymore? Mm -hmm. And they go, why would I want to feel bad when on January 3, <laughs> I'm already so far behind that I uh -huh. know that I can't catch yes. up? Mm -hmm. And so we have taught ourselves not to dream, not to set goals, because we don't want to be disappointed. Oh, wow. And we don't want to feel mm -hmm. bad, because we, particularly in North America, we have this game that we do called comparison. Mm -hmm. I'm going to compare myself to you and whether or not I'm up to speed or you ahead of me. And, you know, when we don't set the goal, now we can have that a little more invisibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that makes that certainly makes sense. So you're saying it really does help us. We can reboot, if we use that word, reboot our brain by setting these get statements. Correct. You know, and the, the way the reboot the brain came about is that in each of our brains in the back, there's a group of cells called the reticular cells. Mm -hmm. And it's very small and it only has one purpose. It's a filter. And so we have, and there's numbers in studies that use different numbers, but the most common is we have about a billion bits of information per second wow. coming into our subconscious. So how do we know what to focus on? How to, because if we had all that information, we wouldn't be able to focus. Mm -hmm. And so the reticular, absolutely. And so the reticular cells synthesizes down the number two and the numbers also, some are even lower than this, to about 2,000 bits of information. And so the example I use many times is, have you ever purchased a car, driven it off the lot, and all of a sudden you see that same car, that same color, everything is right there. <laughs> yeah. And people say, oh, it's happened to me all the time. And my question then is, were those cars already there? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, we just didn't see, see them. Uh -huh. And so programming the reticular cells about what to pay attention to is what's important. And that's the rebooting of the brain. Well, it's really interesting. I hope people will take, take time, go to, go to your website and, and uh, read portions of the book. Uh, and it's what I liked was that it's not even as long a book as one might think because it's a workbook. There's places to write our own get statements, Correct. Our, our vision statements. So it, it's really a, an exercise book. It, it is. You know, they say knowledge is power and I don't mm -hmm. agree with that. It's the application, application. of the knowledge that makes it powerful. Well, thank you so much, Gary. I You're appreciate welcome. getting to see you again. Absolutely.